Welcome to Behind the Nine, the show where uh, myself, your host, and crew chief for the number nine Napa Chevrolet get to know uh, the people behind the nine car a little bit better. And now I'm excited about this one. So we're going to the car side now. We're going to my right-hand man here, the lead race engineer. I don't know. I feel like I should introduce him as the senior VP of engineering operations for the nine car. <laughs> Oh man, Mr. You're already Mr. elaborating, Mr. Yeah, oh, you're already elaborating, Mr. Tom Gray. How are you, buddy? Good, man. Good, good, good. So glad to have you. So I'm gonna get a lot of flack over this shirt now. We're twinning now. Yeah. They gave me a hard time about twinning with Heath. So now me and you are twinning. So I'm gonna have to find something different to wear next week. There you go. So yeah, so uh, we'll explain your position to the fans a little bit. So uh, basically, being the lead race engineer, you touch all technical aspects of the car, all engineering aspects of the car. So um, your main focus or your main expertise would be simulation setup, but certainly you're involved with race strategy and aerodynamics and everything, tires, everything involved on the engineering side of the race car. So did I get it all? Did I get it right? What did I miss? Yeah, yeah, man, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. I would say definitely as a group, we all kind of put our heads together and uh, come up with a, you know, come up with a setup and all that. So yeah, super, it's very fluid. We all try to work together and, uh, and get everything, get all the pieces put together. But yeah, I think you nailed it. Good. So we're going to talk about you a little bit. You're as you know, the, the, the shot here is awesome, right? Your, your go-karts in the background, you got your woodworking tools, you got all the cool stuff. He's got some cool setup taking, I'm gonna have to move. I'm, after, after tonight, I'm moving. Episode four, I'm moving. <laughs> but, yeah, man, you should do it. I mean, you got a cool truck in the background. I mean, you could have like a cool setup. Yeah, I, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna, you've, you've, you've just, You've you've taken to a new level, so next week I'm moving. But so you um, grew up in Indianapolis, racing family. I'm fortunate enough to know your father and your mother and your stepdad and great family, racing family. Uh, we're in the backdrop of Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I know your dad had a machine shop. So uh, any fond memories, anything stick out, any first time trips to the Speedway? What's the, what's the biggest thing that, that kind of stands out to you growing up in that environment as a, young, as a young kid? Yeah, I mean, growing up next to like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is pretty awesome. And then certainly to have your, your family involved in racing. Um, my grandfather owned Mario Andretti Sprint Car, so that was kind of the tie. And then the shop. Uh, there was an old speedway mechanic in the shop next to my dad's um, machine shop. And that's where we kept our racing stuff. And so this guy's name was Bill Spangler and he was an old retired chief mechanic, which would be like a car chief to us, you know? And so, man, to see like some of the old, he worked on the old uh, Gurney Eagle, like 1971, like right when the cars were starting to really have like all the arrow pieces on them and stuff like that. So he told, you know, quite a few cool stories, but yeah, just growing up to the track it was pretty special being able to go there. Uh, my family had tickets every year. We sat in a short shoot, got to see the first inaugural Brickyard 400 with Jeff and got him to sign my hat that day, which is sweet. It's pretty awesome. And then ultimately you get to work with him, which is cool. We'll touch on I know. That. Did you know I wore that hat? I still had that hat and I wore it. Not the year that we won. But but it was like uh, the year before that. I, wore I that do. Hat. I do remember the hat. So, yeah, so you go to Purdue, proud Purdue grad. Um, yeah, how was that experience? Uh, it was cool, man. It's a great school. Um, I'd like to think, like, I was there in the best era. Like, that was the Drew Brees era when I was there. So, oh, like, that is awesome. I mean, it was a good time. Good time. My favorite bar in history is there, a place called Harry's Chocolate Shop, which is, like, this old – it's like one of the oldest bars in Indiana. And this place had like, it was actually part of the Underground Railroad. And they used to like, the floor opens up. Like they got a cellar in the floor, but they used to like hide people. But they keep the liquor down there now, right? So cool atmosphere, like cool town, just kind of old. But there's 30,000 people there in the summer. And so it's it's a good time. A, a lot of studying too. A lot of yeah, studying. Yeah, a lot of studying. So yeah, the, the other one, which 
I'm, I'm not super familiar with, but I want you to touch on is the whole what's the what's the race there? The go kart race, the Purdue uh, Grand Prix. Oh yeah, the Purdue Grand Prix. So did you yeah. win this thing or what? I happened? did. I did. I was. A, I was honest with us. Come on, let's tell this. <laughs> I was the first freshman uh, in history actually to win it in his 42 year history when I started. So I won it twice, and actually Tim O'Brien. Uh, the engineer on the 88. I think he won it twice or three times. So yeah. So we had so, we had a little rivalry back in the day. So did you guys the, race each other or were you two were you separated by years? No, we did. Actually we raced each other. I think the final year, I think my final year we raced each other. I think he won. Pretty sure. Oh. So, yeah, cool. yeah. He got he got me. Oh. To get uh, back to that. I mean I was I was 22 by then. I put on a few pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple of trips to the bar. You know, I don't do it. A couple of right? trips to my favorite bar. Yeah, we've worked together with Mark. We've worked together with Jeff. We've worked together with Chase. So, how's that been? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, it's been a fun ride. I will say that it's 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 been interesting. I will say it's cool because. Um, you just think back to that list, right? And I, I can't, I mean, two of them Hall of Famers, and uh, surely the third one will be, so my opinion. But yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's been good. I mean, we won a lot of races and uh, run up front a lot. Probably should have won a lot more, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been a ride. It's been awesome. So what's, of, of all those races, which we've been together for a lot of race wins, had a lot of like you said a lot of a lot of uh good times a lot of bad times a lot of what ifs and, and you know if and ands but of all those experiences you gotta you gotta give me your you gotta give me your top of the top and you gotta give me your bottom of the bottom so of, of all those experiences which one stands out the most to you and which one keeps you awake uh, at, at night or, or at least the most embarrassing or funny or however you want to term it oh okay these are these are pretty easy well, the, the two, I would say, top two, obviously winning the breakout with Jeff, you know, from my hometown, that was a big one. Yeah. But I would say the Watkins Glen win with Chase was pretty, I mean, I, on a razor's edge. I mean, you were there, right? So what like, are you talking to one here? So we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to get into that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I was being yelled at a lot. You and, were being yelled uh, at a lot, yeah. <laughs> It was coming down to the wire. This is these are the things that people don't see in the background. But things that people it's don't. certainly if you want to talk about a pressure cooker, right? Like that was the ultimate. I mean, it's his first win. Like we had we had been so close. You know what I mean? So I would say that was pretty pretty special. We run out of gas with Jeff at Sonoma to backtrack a little bit, and and it's like Leading we're supposed to we're we're supposed to be a lab to the good, right? And so we run out at the start finish line at Sonoma, yep. and it's like oh, half right. the track to go. Oh, and we were we were leading at the time, right? We were we were leading at yeah. the time, leading at the time. So yeah, not that close. Run out of gas with Jeff, and Jeff's like, I, I think I'm out of gas, and it was the longest pause. Like, pause. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. So that was probably the worst one, and I felt like two inches tall. So, so that back to the Glen. So, so we, back you, to the you, Glen. You communicate to me, this isn't good. We're we're short. Yeah. So I give you the. I don't even. We certainly can't say what I said to you on this show. There's no we question. We were short. <laughs> yeah. What What do you mean we're short? And there's there's, there's a few words sprinkled in through there. Yeah. Right. So. Based on all of our calculations and all of our pre-planning, we thought we were in good shape. And ultimately, we came up uh, a little bit short. And at that point in time, you're like, he's got to save. And I'm like, he can't save. Martin is all over him. So we're doing everything we can to get him to save the 78s all over him. Um, and then ultimately, as you're working through this with Dustin, our, uh, our other race engineer, you find an error, correct? Yes. There was a, in our new fuel uh, procedure, I guess the, the thing that we were work, working on, the yes. gas fuel, we find an error. And the error, the discrepancy in the error was enough. And we're talking about a lap, right? So the people yes. like, so for the everyday person at home, like there's no gas gauge in the car. We're doing yeah. this completely on weight. 
yes. weight and we're estimating, you know, his throttle usage at the time, you know, anyways, yes. and, and in the, in the, uh, in the, one of the calculations that we have, we discovered an error. So we are better than we thought. So now you've completely yelled at me. Now I have to turn around to you and be like, uh, well, we might make it. Yeah. You, you, we might it be all right. It went from we're the Titanic, it's over, this thing is sinking, to we got a shot. So right. ultimately, we, we did what we could to save. Uh, yeah, and we made it, and Martin didn't make it. So Martin he, didn't he, make it. It was that close, right? It was that close. And we were, of course, we ran out. You know, that was a cool uh, experience there. We ran out right afterwards. I don't remember if he did a donut or something, and then and then Jimmy pushed him in, and, you know, we were all waiting for him. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. So what else you got? Any other memorable circumstances? Any other memorable uh, situations? Oh, man, there's so many, so many. Um, I've got an embarrassing one I'm going to tell on you. So if you've oh, got an embarrassing one you want to tell on me or you've got well, some funny circumstances, you go first. I'll give you your chance to go first. Oh, man, <laughs> you're going to pin me with it? Oh, hmm. I don't know. I kind of, let's see. The one, I don't know if this is embarrassing or not. But the one, the one where Mark wore your uniform was pretty awesome. Oh, that is fantastic. I'll describe this one. So for the people, no, probably nobody knows this, but um, we were at Talladega and our truck driver at the time, Dean, hung my uniform on my locker. And Mark's locker was right next to my locker. So Tom works in the lounge with me, and he sits right next to me. So we're sitting up there getting ready to go. I uh, get dressed for the race, and we're looking on TV. And somebody notices on TV, Mark <laughs> is on pit road. They show him on TV, and it says Gustafson on his back. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm six foot plus. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what Mark is. I, I mean, five six maybe. Like yeah, it's probably yeah, five six, five seven. So Mark has my uniform on on pit road, and we're like, no way. So <laughs> we send somebody out there to run him down, to grab him, to get him to come back and change, which happens and does. And he felt so bad. I felt so bad for him. But man, we were dying laughing. Dude, it was awesome. As soon as the the like the interview was finished, he turns around backwards and the camera's right there. It says Gustafson on the back. And I'm like, oh no. Oh my God. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, he's going to be mad at me and you both. I know he is. He's going to be pissed. We love, Mark, we love you. We love you, Mark. Just we love you, man. It was funny. It was in good fun. I love this one. So we're at Chicago and uh, we had a, it was a horrible day at Chicago last year. And we rain delay. We started out really bad. We came back to the truck. We got together, talked it over, me, you, and Dustin, and, and Matt, and everybody, and Josh, and you came together with a plan. You worked through some things. We came down pit road, made a ton of changes to the car, and phew, rocket ship to the front. Um, take the lead, actually, or battle part for the win of the second stage. I can't remember. So, you know, it was a rain delay. It's going on and on and on. So we have, unfortunately, used more tires than everybody else. And we're having to bleed out because we couldn't change a set of tires to get back. And we're riding around there and <clears throat> the caution comes out and we're like 10 hours into the day so far. Everybody's hungry, everybody's tired, everybody's wet. And I look over at you and Matt. I thought you were talking about, oh, man. I look over at you and Matt at the pit box. And I'm like, the car's coming. I'm like, hey, this doesn't do anything for us to pit here. And you and Matt both have this deep dish Chicago style pizza, like <laughs> mid bite. And you both look at me like, hmm? And I'm like, was this a pizza party over here? So. <laughs> Heath, our truck driver, had brought a pizza up. I'll never let you guys live that one down. It is hilarious. I can't. I will never forget the look on your guys' face when I looked over. So yeah, 
<laughs> that was bad. That was complete like Days of Thunder. Like you can't fit. We're eating pizza. Like, sorry, you had to go. Keep going. Yeah, that was yeah. bad. And I, you know what? The thought ran across my mind. I'm like, I could type on my keyboard, but my hands were like full of sauce. Like. <laughs> I think you just like like full with your mouth full. You just like did this to me. You're like, no, we don't. No, it didn't do us any good. But yeah, it was not timed right. Oh, that was hilarious. That was funny. That was a good one. Yeah, our buddy Heath. You know, so Heath was the first show, and and his infamous eating habits were fairly well documented. So our buddy Heath, you know, he he likes to he likes to hand deliver you guys food, and he typically. Uh, Every once in a while, I get a, a like a crumb, but you know, you guys have a buffet up there typically. Typically, typically. yeah, yeah, typically. We we eat good. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we've had the opportunity to work with some characters, and I think yeah. this is super cool because to really understand, uh, to see like the background and and the people. Um, I, I only wish that was my wish for most people that say like, well, what is it about racing or what do you like about racing or what makes it fun for you? And I honestly would say like the people and the experiences are something that's hard to describe. And I wish for an average fan, like it's one thing to watch the race. It's one thing to walk, watch those guys walk around the garage and stuff like that. But man, to really know the backstory, like if we had a, if we had a sitcom, I'm telling you, we would kill it every I week. Agree. I it agree. Would be, it We're is, I've the hardest I've ever laughed. We we have some characters, there's no doubt. And so you're kind of uh, you know, you know, you've inherited the position. I guess I'll 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 ask you about this for my parting question. So you've inherited the position. So Sunshine was kind of Sunshine, Chris Heroy was was my race engineer prior to you. So his nickname was Switzerland because everybody would go to him because he was neutral ground. So they instead of coming to me or somebody else, they would go to Chris because he was neutral ground. So right. you've inherited, you know, you now are are, are the the owner take ownership in Switzerland. You are now the neutral ground for the nine team. So you get all of the, you know, you get all the content, all the questions, all the comments, mm-hmm. all of the stuff. So that that can, I'm sure, be interesting at times. Oh, super super interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, for sure. It's, pretty <laughs> interesting. Uh, it's a good thing we have a couch in the office. We That's, do. Yes. We yes. need to pot, we, we need to, we need to video cast from the office. I, I think, think it'd be good. That would be a good one. That w- yeah, we, we do have a couch and, uh, yeah, if you've, you've got some problems, you can come in and, and sit down on the couch and, and, uh, um, talk to Tom, and then every time I walk in, they all leave. I don't know. I don't know why that happens. <laughs> Especially Heath. <laughs> Especially no. Heath, because Heath has been there for 45 minutes. Exactly. That's what it is. And every time, it's like getting caught when you're a kid. He's like, oh man, here comes dad. I gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Always a pleasure. Good to see you. I talk to you about every day, so... Um, yeah, it's good to see your face, and uh, yeah, thanks for coming on Behind the Nine and, uh, and uh, telling people a little bit about yourself. Yeah, man, thanks, brother. It was a good time. Bye.